welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 149, and the back space is a little different because the craft cave has been completed, and now I'm filming where I've always wanted to be able to film, which is with the yarn behind me. It actually doesn't do a full wide scan, but I have two full bookshelves of the yarn, and I have a craft tour, a craft room tour set up for this Wednesday's podcast. So if you want to see how I've rearranged the room, um, you can check that out on Wednesday. So there's also less glare, I think. There's still a little bit, but there's less glare off of my eyeglasses. But I've got to wear my eyeglasses because I can't see a thing otherwise. So let's get started. I have been extremely busy this week between ex- uh, between work and um, trying to get this room organized. My whole house is a disaster right now because one thing had to be moved to another thing and another place to another place. And it was just, everything got shifted around throughout the entire house. So I'm still putting everything back together again. But this room's done. The important place, priorities. I mean, you know, it's completed. So let's get started with my finished objects. So here is my first finished object. This is a crocheted backpack for my granddaughter for her ballet things. It's just a drawstring. I was going to originally put a grommet on here, but I thought this would felt better than it did. Knitting felts very easily, but you can see that the crochet, it fuzzed up. It is a little felted. You can see it like in this area where it's a little fuzzed, but it did not felt the way I had hoped it would, so as a result, I did not put a grommet on it. It just has a drawstring through the top, and then the back just has two little straps for her to wear, so she can wear it over her back. So, yep, that's for my granddaughter, and she just turned eight. How did that happen? Uh, but anyway, yes, yeah, so this is not her birthday present or anything. I just made this as an experiment, and I knew these were colors that I wouldn't wear, but she's eight. It's pink. It's purple. She'll wear it, So, um, or she'll use it. So, yes, yeah, so that was my experiment. Now, I do want to make the crocheted mosaic bucket bag that Susie Pops made, and so did Spring Noelker. I just haven't decided what yarn I want to make it with yet. So, um... That is um, on my, that's the bucket bag to make on my bucket list. So, um, but this was my experiment in felting. I just wanted to see how felting worked with crochet. And in this case, it didn't work so well, although this was 100% wool. So um, I think if I'm going to felt something, I'll stick to knitting. I think it stands a better chance. But it's okay. It, it will work. She'll be happy with it. So that's project number one. Project number two is yet another dishcloth, and this is navy blue. It does look black, but it's not. It's navy blue. And this is another one for my daughter-in-law. So I think this makes two or three for her in the navy blue. So that's done. And here's something interesting that I found out. When Yoka sent me the pattern for the dishcloth, she told me she had modified it, and then I modified it as far as the size. I was going through some of my patterns from all of my collection of stuff here and sorting out some books that I just didn't use anymore, or there's just patterns that weren't to my taste anymore. And there was a lot of loose patterns that I had copied over the years. This pattern right here is this pattern without the modifications. I looked at it and I thought, huh, that casts on the same amount of stitches. And then I started looking at it and it's like, that is almost exactly the same pattern. So, yes, there it is. So, if you would like me to do a tutorial for this pattern, not the modified one, because that's not mine. But um, and this one's not mine either, but I don't know whose it is. It came out of a book from years ago, and it's a pretty traditional one, apparently. I've looked over. I found some others that are very similar to this as well. So I think it's kind of a universal type of pattern. Um, it might even have been put out 
It might even have been put out by Lily Sugar and Cream because that's the yarn it recommends. So I have no idea, but it is very, very similar to the pattern that I'm making here. Nearly identical. So anyway, if you would like me to do a tutorial on this, please let me know down below. So if, if you want me to do one, I will. So my other finished object, I have one more, and it's sort of, I guess it'd be semi-finished. I have a third video in the uh, spinning series that was going to be the final processing for yarn, but I was still in the process of spinning all of the yarn in order to do that. While I was organizing this mess here, I found that I had six balls of single ply lace weight yarn that I had spun. I'm not really knitting with lace weight yarn a whole lot anymore. I do, but I don't do it a huge amount because it's really difficult on my eyes. So um, it's not that I can't. I just don't have the... I used to knit late waist a lot. I just don't do it as much because it's very slow. It doesn't make the progress you can make with fingering or worsted, worsted weight. So I decided I had seven balls of this single single spun lace weight yarn and thought, I could spin that double ply and make it a fingering weight, and then it would be something I would probably use a little bit more. So that's what I did. I have spun here. This is this is 100% wool. I don't think it's merino. It doesn't feel quite as soft as merino, but it's not scratchy either, so I'm not real sure what it is. I've had this for years. I bought it probably at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. So I have spun it twice so it's two ply it's a fingering weight i have not um set the twist yet so it might fluff up a little bit that's called blooming once i set the twist but i'm spinning these up because because the spinning part's already done i just have to ply them together so i have two two balls of plied yarn so far so i've spun together like four of the seven balls so it's going to go a lot quicker. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to get the last couple balls of yarn plied together, and then I can show the plying, pro or not the plying process. I've already done that. The third video is showing how you weigh how much yarn you've got to decide how many yards you have, and how you set the twist, and how you put it together in a hank. So, um, yeah, that's a video that's coming up, but I'm partway through the uh, plying process. One more thing in my finished objects. I have my pattern written up. This is the crow fade wrap that I was working on. And I have the pattern completed. Let me show you a couple of the pictures. This, of course, is the, the main picture on the main page. And... Here's a picture of it over the shoulders. And here is a picture of it wrapped around the neck. I have four test crocheters who are testing this for me. So I want to say a special thank you to Wanda and Mary and Tina and Chris. So thank you so much for your willingness to be my crochet guinea pigs because this is only the second pattern I've written in crochet and this is a lot more detailed than my first one was. So uh, I thank you for taking me on and trying this. And if you didn't receive your email yet, ignore the page numbers because I realized when I was printing this out that it goes page one, page two, and then page three does not have a number on it. And then page four actually says page three. And I got my page numbers off. Somehow or other, I did something with the spacing and it threw the pages off after I put them in. So I need to go in and adjust that because the page numbers were actually supposed to be at the bottom. And now after the second page, they show up on the top. So I did something with the spacing and it bounced them to the next page. So that's why the page numbers are not matching. So just ignore that. I need to go in and modify that part in the pattern. So as soon as that pattern has been test crocheted by everybody and they all say that, yes, you can read it and make sense out of what I wrote, 
then it will be released. So that's, that's an upcoming pattern release. Sorry, I noticed the camera was dipping down a little bit and you were starting to lose me. So I had to fix that real quick. Now in my works in progress, let's get started. I have just dropped the crochet hook. I have my scrappy blanket. I only did like one row or two row, one row on this this week. So you can see right where I was last week. I did this row. That was it. Um, like I said, I've spent most of my week working up here on the craft craft cave, getting this pattern finalized, and I did a lot on my sweater. So there's not a whole lot done on the scrappy blanket, and that's fine because there's no time constraint on this. This is kind of my fun thing when I want to just kind of chill out, not concentrate on anything, and just have fun. So apparently I didn't have fun this week. I was not chilled out. So I didn't do a whole lot on it. Now I'll show you my sweater. Now my sweater I did get quite a bit done, mainly because I want to be finished with it so that I had the slightest chance of actually being able to wear it this year. The weather's already coming, getting cooler with the hurricane that's come through um, down south. It's blown colder weather up here, so it's like in the upper 60s right now. I'm not wearing a short sleeve sweater outside, but here is how far I have gone this week. I've done about a little over two inches. So I've still got a ways to go, but there it is. There's the beading. And there's where I'm at. It's still just covering the top section of me. So I've still got quite a ways. I feel like it is the forever sweater. Hopefully it won't dry rot on one end before it gets totally knitted on the other. So that's my sweater in progress, like forever in progress. Now I have a new crochet project that's going on. Um, I talked about it last week. Pam Phillips had sent me an email with this picture of, um, it has a YouTube, tutor a YouTube tutorial that goes along with it. Uh, for this sweater that was well, a cardigan that you make and it's all one piece. You crochet the back and then you crochet the arms and then you crochet the front and then you hook the whole thing together. Sounds like an easy thing right up my alley. Now I showed you some yarn last week that I was going to make it with some autumn colors. That's not going to happen. Um, the sweater's happening, but that particular yarn I will not be using. I do like it, but it's fingering weight, which means it's going to take a lot of yarn. And from a knitting standpoint, I know how much yarn it takes to make a cardigan, or at least the ballpark figure. Crochet, not so much. And the more I looked at it, I was like, I don't think this is going to be enough. So I emailed Pam and I said, this is how much yarn I've got. And do you think this is going to be enough? And I mean, I'll tell you guys right up front. I wear a t size 2X. I would love to be able to say that the camera makes me look much bigger than I'm really a skinny person, but that would be a total and complete lie. Um, so anyway, I wear a 2X. So I told her how much yarn I had, and I was like, what do you think? And she's like, mm, yeah, I don't think that's, I, I don't think you've got enough there. And I was like, I don't either. I don't want to play yarn chicken and end up with the whole, spend all that time and have the yarn or the pattern all messed up. So I dove into the stash again when I cleaned out the craft room and I found some yarn that is worsted weight. It is 100% Australian wool. It doesn't say it's merino, but I have a feeling there's some merino in it. It's not scratchy, but it's not real soft, soft either. So the story behind this, let me show it to you and then I'll explain the kind of the story behind it. So here is gold, and then we have orange. They start out kind of fall colors, and then we have green, and then we have blue. So there's the four colors. Now, I don't have just four skeins of it. I have, I have of the, the blue, I think there's five or six skeins of this. There's four skeins of blue. There's two each 
of the orange and the yellow. So I do have, and I added it up. I figured out the interesting thing with this yarn, it did not say on the ball band how many yards were in per each skein. So I actually had to roll out a bunch of yarn, weigh it till I got a quarter of an ounce, and then multiply a quarter, what I got for a quarter of an ounce, which was, I believe, 13 or 14 yards per quarter ounce. So then I multiplied that times four. So I knew for every ounce I had, it was 55 yards per ounce. And then I weighed each of these balls of yarn to see how many ounces they were. Um, because for some reason, my grams on my little scale weren't working. Ounces was, grams wasn't registering. So I did it by ounces, and um, I multiplied 55 times the number of ounces that were in here so I could figure out how many yards. And then I multiplied the number of yards per skein, or for however many skeins I had. So that's how I added it all up. So all total... In the blue, I have 1,042 and a quarter yards. In the green, I have 785.4. In the yellow, I have 389.4. And in the orange, I have 371.8. So all total, I have 2,589 yards. That should be enough to make me a crocheted sweater. Now, with these balls of yarn, I thought it would be interesting to show you how I wind them up. In case you've never seen yarn wound into cakes, I thought since I was doing it, I would film that and you guys could see how to do it. So I'm going to insert that. First, I'm going to take my hank of yarn and open it up. And you'll see it's in a loop. And I put it over this with a winder. And then I open the winder up like that. Now I'm going to find the end, which is right here. So you can see it's coming off of here and it goes through this and then it's going to hook through this little notch right across the top here. So there's the general setup. Now, my little arm thing is broken, so I actually have to hold it up while I crank the yarn right there. So let's get it started. You can see what it looks like so far. Now, this is a small ball winder. This section here on some of the larger ones is the flange is out longer. So this is a fairly small one. So I do stop and check it regularly. You can see it's getting almost to the edge here. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit because I don't want it to get caught underneath here and get caught in these gears. We're coming to the last couple rounds here. And there it is, and then it just slides right off the top. And there it is. Uh, so we hope that works out. Now, 
The story behind this yarn, do not have tea or coffee in your mouth when I tell you this. A um, couple years ago, there was a yarn place that went out of business, and several of us ladies went up to it. They had these kits of sweaters that were probably from the 1980s. They were both made by the same company. They both had the same yarn. So some of these, the green yarn was in both of the kits, and so was the blue. They both had the same type of colors in both sweaters. So I bought two boxes. They were super cheap. And there's no way I'm making the sweaters that they were intended for. I forget what the one sweater was. They were in 1980s sweaters. They looked definitely like 1980s sweaters. The one had a cow on the front of it. Yes, you heard. There, I said cow. Yeah, there is a skein of black and white hanging out now on the shelf over in here. Uh, yes, Katrina is not wearing a cow. You know, I may wear a 2X sweater, but I am not wearing a cow sweater. Yeah, I don't know who in the world would want to wear a cow sweater. But originally, the green was the grass. The... Um, Blue was the sky, the white was the white and black were for the cow and for clouds up in the air. The yellow was the hay. I think there was a haystack in the background. And I forget what the orange went to. But um yeah, Katrina is not wearing a cow. Yes. Just to say, you know, I my fashion statement ability or my my fashion might be questionable, but I don't do cows. So yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. So let's check out what you guys are making now.
Now, I was really good this week. Uh, there was a Lion Brand $10, 10 skein, uh, sale that went on. And thank you guys for letting me know. One of you contacted and put up, a, put up the, the correct link. I was sent the link to the sale in my, um, in my email. And so I didn't realize it was a different link than my affiliate link that I already had. So I put up the link that I already had because that's what automatically loads onto YouTube. And lo and behold, it did not take you over to the sale. And a lot of you were, were commenting going, it doesn't work. The link doesn't work. The link doesn't work. One of you, and I, a special thank you, and I will put up whose name that was. Uh, thank you so much for going in and correcting and sticking in the in the comments to those people what the correct link was so they didn't miss out on the sale. So thank you again for doing that. Um, I was gone as soon as the link went up, and when I came back home and looked at it, I went, oh, no. So then I had to try to track down and make the link work. And so anyway... I was good. I didn't buy anything. I know some of you guys got some stuff. So if you did, send pictures. We all like to see what you guys got. Um, but they did have some great sales. And I didn't just because, uh, yeah, all of this. Once you see the craft room tour, you will understand why I did not need to buy any more Lion Brand yarn. So I was good. No acquisitions this week. Now, October, we're in September. But in October, it will be my third year anniversary for podcasting. As a celebration, we are going to have a giveaway of some kind, three of which are going to be yarn, every week. Yes, every week we're going to have a giveaway in the month of October. So make sure you will have to be a subscriber so just make sure if you aren't already that you become a subscriber so that you can participate in those giveaways, which will start the first week in October. So now it is time for now I got my little cheat book so I don't miss out on any of the sales. So let's get started. There is some good ones this week. Annie's is offering $2 off of any of their download patterns right now. So that's good, especially since I checked out a couple patterns. They're both cardigan. One is called the Vertical Blanket Cardigan, and that is a crochet pattern. I'm going to put the picture up. The other is a knitted cardigan called the Copeland Cardigan. And like I said, that is knitted. Now, over in Blueprint, they are offering 40% off of their shawl knitting kits. So, um, yeah, that's a really good price, 40% off of any of their shawl knitting kits. They also are offering 40% off of their worsted sweater kits. Um, worsted. When I say kit, it means you get the pattern and the yarn. So when you look at the price, remember that includes the yarn in that. So 40% off of their worsted sweater patterns. And kits are just kits. Yeah, 40% off their worsted sweater kits. And then they are offering 60% off of one blueprint exclusive item. So there's some patterns that are out there that are considered, they'll say on them, blueprint exclusive. So they were created. You're not going to find them over on Ravelry. You're not going to find this pattern anywhere else but on blueprint. If you choose one of those um, items, you can get 60% off. You do need to use a coupon code GET60 in order to get the 60% off. Consumer Crafts is offering through this weekend only. So it ends, this is Saturday, it ends tomorrow night on September 8th. So it ends at midnight on September 8th, but they're offering free shipping on any orders over $25. So if you want that free, if you want that three-tiered cart, you could get free shipping on it. I think that's like $7 or $8 off in shipping. Um, they also are the cheapest place around to get your uh, Lily Sugar and Cream yarns. So um, that's Consumer Crafts. Create for Less has Red Heart Classics on sale for $2.39. The Dollar Tree 
You can order off of their website, and you can order yarn. You do need to buy a case of yarn from them. You can't just buy a couple of skeins. So they do have them in, in groups of six to eight skeins at a time. They do, just make sure you read carefully, because some of them are in cases of 57 so it would be like $57. So just make sure you click on the right one. Uh, but they have Red Heart Unforgettable Waves uh, in in uh, their their um, $1. All, everything's $1 per skein, but it's just you have to buy them by the case. So anyway, they do have Red Heart Unforgettable. And they have Premier Cotton or Premier Home Cotton Yarn as well. And again, you have to buy that by the case. Hobium has some really pretty stuff this time. They are offering in their Stars of the Month, it's a three skein pack. And, and it's a, a light DK weight. So kind of like between a sport and a worsted is a light DK. Light DK, it's called Lamia Magic Trio. Now there's 273 yards. I don't know if that's per skein or if that's the whole bundle. But here's the thing that's cool. It's only $7.35. You get three skeins of yarn, but they're color coordinated. So it is a solid, like um, they might have a purple, and then they have a variegated purple, and then they have a white with it. And they have several, they have quite a few colors to choose from. There was like red and variegated red, and then a white. Uh, there was a gray and a variegated gray, and then a white. Um, so yes, there's lots to choose from, and they come, like I said, in a package of three, and they're all color-coordinated. So, um, yeah, you'd have to read a little bit more to see if it is 273 yards per skein, because if it's per skein, you could get an entire shawl out of the three. Or if it's 273 altogether, then if you bought two, you would have plenty for a shawl. Uh, but anyway, color-coordinated. So you could do, you know, some stripes or some variegated. Yeah, it could look really cool. Anyway, that is in their Stars of the Month. They also, in the Stars of the Month, have Lamia Mercerized Cotton. If you buy one skein, it's $2.06. If you buy in a package of five, you get them for $1.85 a piece. They have Kartopu Zampak Chunky Yarn. It's $1.95 per skein, but if you buy five, you get it for $1.76. They also have Cashmere Gold. It's two eighty one. Of course, it's got cashmere in it. Uh, it's two eighty one per skein, but if you buy it in a group of five, you get it for two dollars and fifty three cents. So that is in their stars of the month, and they also have a clearance section, which I didn't even get to since they had so much to offer in the stars of the month. Then over on ice yarns, of course, they have the closeout section. They have the garage sale section. There's too many things to even even talk about what they've got. Just go over and check them out for yourself because there's lots to choose from. Over at Knit Crates, you can get 20% off of your first subscription box, but you do need to use the coupon code KCREATIONS20. Knit Picks is offering 20%. This is their yarn of the month. They always pick one particular yarn or brand or whatever to put 20% off of. This month, it is 20% off of their alpaca yarns. I checked to see what is this the cheapest one you can get, and it's six dollars and fifteen cents a skein for alpaca. That's not bad at all. Although I did get some alpaca from Blueprint for three something, so pays to shop around. But uh, yes, they do. Knit Picks does have alpaca yarn starting at six fifteen per skein. They also are offering if you spend up to fifty dollars, if you spend fifty dollars or more you get a free pin. And it's one of these little enamel pins that are really cute right now and very popular that you put on your project bags. Uh, they have several to choose from. Um, they had one that looks like a little skein of yarn I thought was really cute. Uh, so anyway, that one is, you do need to use a coupon. Uh, yeah, that one you do need to use a coupon code to get that free pin. You do need to spend $50 or more. And the coupon is PIN2019. Leisure Arts, I went over and checked out a couple of patterns there. In the knitting section, they have a book called Awesome Knits for Guys and Chicks. It's a download. It is 10 different items. I mean, some of them are accessories. I saw a sweater in there as well. 
the download, it's only $2.99, and you get 10 patterns. That's 29 cents a pattern. Can't beat that. Uh, so anyway, that is awesome knits for guys and chicks, and I'll stick a picture so you can see what it looks like. And then they have scrappy afghans in the crochet, crochet section. And since I'm doing the scrappy afghan and some of you have talked about wanting to make them, I thought that would be the ideal thing to show you guys. So here is what it looks like. Now over on Lion Brand, they are offering 20% off of their new blogger kits. So again, it's a pattern and the yarn. And there are some beautiful patterns over there. The one that opens up on the front, uh, the front page when you go to the site is really, really pretty. It's like solid on the top and then it has like a lacy bottom to it. They're calling it a dress. I, I wouldn't wear the lacy part unless I had something underneath it and it would have to be quite a bit longer. I would think of it more as, as a tunic, but either way, it was really pretty, but it was 20% off of their new blogger kits. They also had their ribbon air yarn uh, starting at $2.99. They had their Fay yarn starting at $4.19. And if you weren't aware of this, Lion Brand has free patterns on their site that you can go over and check out. I was looking through some of them. They have some really, really pretty patterns, and they're free. You know me, free on my forehead. So anyway, uh, yeah, if you're like me and you want to check out some free stuff, go check out their free patterns. So I also wanted to let you know about one of our viewers has started her own YouTube channel. It is called Yarn Happens with Mary Ann. I think she's put out two different um, episodes so far. So if you want to go over and check her out, you could do that. Again, that is Yarn Happens with Mary Ann. And Wednesday's podcast, as I said before, is a tour of the new and improved craft room. So that's it for this week. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you again on Wednesday.